There's a lot of debate out there as to whether or not regen versus just coasting your car down a hill is actually better. So in this review, or this video rather, I'm gonna test just that by going up Mount Macedon twice. One time using regen, second time no regen, and I'm gonna do it as fairly as possible. So sticking to the speed limit using cruise control. I'm gonna have the aircon off, and I'm gonna start with the battery at identical charge point, okay? We'll uh, measure the amount of energy we take going up, the amount we get back, repeat it again, but with no regen. And I think, I think, I'm gonna demonstrate that by using regen, you actually get more range out of your electric vehicle compared to just coasting. So, are you ready? Make a comment now, take your bet now, don't cheat, and let's see what happens. Ready, let's go. I have reset the odometer and we are starting out with 68% battery. This guy's gonna go around me and away we go. All right, so where possible, I'm gonna get up to the speed limit as safely as possible and then put cruise control on straight away. That way I've got a consistent speed. I've also got no aircon on, okay? Very important thing that because uh, the temperature here in this mountain might vary so, so significantly that the amount of energy that the battery needs to use to run the aircon uh, will affect our result. So I need to take that out of the equation. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a matter of getting up this hill. So instead of me boring you, <laughs> I'm gonna just do some lovely B-roll and let's snap right on up to the top of Mount Macedon. Okay, I've got to the top of Mount Macedon and incredibly moody, love it. Okay, I took a photograph because I've learned before that if I leave the car running, uh, when I show you the vision, it will be different to what I actually say right here, right now. So we got up here, took the photograph, turned the car off. Okay, rejet on the way up, uh, took us 15 minutes, we did 11.9 kilometers and we've used 42.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers of energy. And the battery is at 62% guess that's probably the more important figure to remember here, 62%. Again, using regen. We're going to go down now. We're going to go down now. I'm going to have this current iPedal mode, using regen, aircon still off, doing the speed limit, and uh, I'll let you know the bottom. And we'll repeat the process again. Oh my gosh. Um, so that uh, we can understand what the difference is when we don't have regen turned on. All right, let's do the next bit. All right, um, we're down the bottom of the mountain and something really fascinating happened, but I wanna get this charge happening before I tell you the exact result. But a little note for Kia, by the way, having the charging port on the A pillar is a bit annoying. It's actually better on the C pillar because most chargers like this are designed to go to the back of the car. Well, rather you reverse the car in and the length of the cable is the issue. So if I, if I take this to a Tesla charger, it's gonna be really, really painful and uh, it, the cable will not reach. I guarantee the cable will not reach. So not a good spot, better back there. All right, let's look at the numbers. We've come down Mount Macedon, a trip of 12.2 kilometers, go figure, 14 minutes, and the kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers was zero, absolute zero. And that's because the car used regen almost the entire journey. Now remembering, when we got to the top of the mount, that was a very, very high figure. And we had 292 kilometers left of range, okay? Battery at 62%. We've come down that mountain, we've done 12 kilometers of range, and get this, we now have 298 kilometers of range. So we've added more back into the battery, and it's still saying the battery is at 62%. Remembering, we're left here with 68%. Isn't that amazing? So we've gone up and back, supposedly for, well, a zero sum game, but the battery is telling us we've actually used about 6% of it. Still, pretty good. So, I'm charging right now, and we're gonna go up to 68%. We'll stop it, and we'll go and repeat the journey, but this time, we regen off or absolutely on level one, absolutely zero possible. And I think I need to make a few notes about that, but I'll tell you what they are in the next section. We're going back up the hill, and I uh, just discovered uh, one of the issues with my method, so I'm having to adapt it, but I think it's the most fairest way possible. As soon as I put this car into 
cruise control so that I'm doing the same speed limit, it actually will put regen on. It will actually uh, put energy back into the battery. Whereas when I'm in level zero right now, that's level zero regen mode, that's akin to what a petrol diesel car does when it just coats, it's in neutral say. Um, no energy whatsoever was going back into the battery. So as I was leaving Macedon, uh, as I was going down a slight hill, and I had my foot off the accelerator, off the brake, absolutely no energy whatsoever was going into the battery. It was um, behaving like a normal petrol diesel car. So I'm now gonna have to really, really focus on, again, matching speed, but with no cruise control, because as soon as I do, and any slight de um, you know, decline, this car wants to throw energy back into the battery if I use cruise control. So yeah, all right, I'm gonna focus, but again, this will be a fascinating result and I'll be curious to see how we end up. And we're back at the top of Mount Macedon again. <laughs> and, uh, okay, I was expecting the numbers to be identical realistically because there's not a lot of opportunity for this car to actually do regen, uh, or rather for me to use the brake, not regen. Anyway, more on that later because I learned something additionally about this car and the way it behaves. But anyway, so coming up the mountain, instead of 11.9 kilometers, we're supposed to have done 12 kilometers this time. So maybe we're just edging over that last time and didn't come through. And the amount of energy you used first time coming up with regen on was 42.9 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. And this time, 42.6. So marginally better. Weird. <laughs> I wonder why that is. But Interestingly, the battery is identical at 62%. And it's uh, saying, uh, I didn't say on here, I can't really see because I cut it out. Damn it, I had the car room. Um, it had some kilometers left, I think. Oh yeah, it's got 297 kilometers left, fantastic. And last time I had 292. Now, for those uh, little nerds out there, you know full well what's going on here is that that 1% of the battery can be significant. Like the electrons, they're balancing around in the batteries and they're moving, well not moving around, they're moving the cell, in the cells. But you know, that 1% has a lot of gradient inside of it, a lot of variation inside of it. And so if I could ideally, accurately, scientifically have this at 69, uh, sorry, 68% before we commenced, bang on, no variation, there'll be an even playing field. So I think it explains that small variation in my numbers so far. But let's head down the hill and uh, I'll wrap it up because um, I'll be fascinated to see how this actually goes on our return journey using no regen. We are back and I don't want to waste your time because there's a lesson for this car that I've learned and I think I can solve it in another video. But anyway, uh, here's the result. We've arrived back, we've got this, not 62% battery, but 63%. And 302 kilometers of range versus, I think, 300 kilometers of range. In other words, we've come back with more battery and we've got more range, and that's really disappointing. <laughs> it's very disappointing. And the reason for this is because, despite me having it on level zero, so what will happen is, if you accelerate and then you take your foot off, it just coasts. See what it's doing here? Absolutely no charge is going back into the battery. But the moment I have to use the brake, because coming down the mountain, if I let the car get away from me, it's just gonna keep on going faster and faster, regen happens. And it starts throwing energy back into that battery. And because I had to wait for the last second and put the brakes on, probably later than I would have liked to, I think what's happened is that regen has thrown a lot more energy back into this on the way down compared to what I did the first time round. So that's disappointing, <laughs> but it's good too, it's good too. So how, how can I solve this? I need to be able to prove this because I'm certain. Why would car makers have regen? Why would they have this as a feature? They don't do things because for naught. And also you as the owner, by using regen, you use your brakes less. So it saves you money. It saves you money with electricity if it gives you more range. If it gives you more range, that's the key of this damn video. So I think I've, what I can do, I can repeat this another time using my MG, MG ZSEV. That's an older car. And when you, when you set cruise control on that, it actually used the friction brakes to slow the car down. So we'll have to do this again. God damn. Okay. With that rather disappointing outcome, I thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. If your name is Bob and you've watched my videos but you don't subscribe, mate, 
What are you doing? Can you please hit that subscribe button now? Now's the time to do it. Whilst you're thinking about it, I've got heaps of content about electric cars and more. And if you want to take your thanks to another level, you can think about Kofi for behind the scenes and early access, or super thanks is really welcome as well. And otherwise, YouTube might think you're gonna like one of these videos. So maybe click on one of these, you might enjoy it. Maybe it's for you, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, next time.